The time is quickly passing when the main weapons on the decks of aircraft carriers were missiles and artillery platforms. Modern militaries are increasingly turning to technologies that can drastically reduce the cost of combat without losing effectiveness. Thus, combat lasers might become the symbol of a new approach in military affairs. But is there a ship capable of generating enough energy for them? The answer is obvious, Ford-class aircraft carriers. Today, we'll be figuring out what the real capabilities of lasers are in naval warfare and what advantages we can get from them in the war of the future. The Gerald R. Ford class of aircraft carriers, or should I say supercarriers, began their long and strange journey under the CVN-21 program, for which the US Navy requested $1.5 billion in the FI-2004 budget. And although construction of the lead ship of the Gerald R. Ford CVN-78 class began exactly as planned in 2007 at Newport News Shipbuilding, the total cost to American taxpayers for the new toy of the fleet increased to $12.8 billion for the ship and another $4.7 billion for research and development work. But let's be completely honest, it was worth it. After all, this aircraft carrier is a true technological miracle whose evolution, as is the case with most ambitious projects, was not without headaches for its creators. Its dimensions in real life are even more impressive than on paper. This ruler of the seas and oceans impresses its viewers with a displacement of 100,000 tons, a length of 1,106 feet, and a width of 256 feet, which is comparable to the size of more than three football fields. And its height of 250 feet is literally just short of the spire of Trinity Church in New York. The impressive size of the deck allows the new pearl of the American fleet to transport up to 90 aircraft, including Boeing FA-18EF Super Hornet fighters as well as new Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, electronic warfare aircraft EA-18G Growler, Northrop Grumman E-2 Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning Aircraft, Grumman C-2 Greyhound transporters, Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk helicopters, and also combat drones. It would perhaps be surprising if Ford supercarriers had no external distinctive feature from the Nimitz class that preceded them. The new class of vessels received a more aft location of the island, freeing up more space on the deck, and the absence of bulky antennas. Over the decades of operation, Nimitz has absorbed many new technologies, but the carrier's ability to support the latest US technological advances falls far short of Ford supercarriers. Moreover, the main problem here is the limited possibilities for generating electricity, although it's not too surprising, since the Nimitz propulsion systems were developed back in the 1960s when all onboard systems required much less energy. But now everything's changed. So too Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors were installed in the Ford class, providing 25% more power generation capacity than the A4W reactors installed on Nimitz. At the same time, they're smaller in size and much easier to maintain. Ford supercarriers convert steam into power by piping it into four main turbo generators to generate electricity to power core systems and new electromagnetic catapults. There are also electromagnetic aircraft launch systems, or EMILs, an aircraft launch system that uses a linear induction motor instead of a traditional piston motor. Thanks to this, airplanes and UAVs accelerate more smoothly, and their airframe is subject to much less load. An additional plus for electromagnets is the reduction in the aircraft carrier's need for fresh water and energy-intensive desalination. In general, however, EMILS is not the only one. Electromagnets were also used in the new advanced arresting gear system, which replaced the hydraulic system introduced more than half a century ago. AG also relieves aircraft of unnecessary stress during landing and is a more flexible, safe, and reliable system overall. Simply put, now experts don't have to worry that the newest drones entering Ford's air wing are in danger due to sudden braking caused by hydraulics. The main stumbling block for the USS Ford was not even its staggering high cost, but rather the advanced weapons elevator, a system of elevators powered by electromagnetic motors that allows you to quickly move ammunition from the weapons departments to the flight deck. The main trick is that due to the thoughtful placement of these elevators, ammunition will not cross any air wing movement zones, reducing to zero possible problems with movement in hangars and on deck, due to which rearmament of aircraft will now take minutes, not hours. And although these elevators forced a delay in the ship's deployment, originally 2018, moving to 2022, the US Navy still allowed the Ford crew and air wing to begin training in the spring of 2020 and even conduct shock testing in the summer of 2021. The ship bravely withstood the explosion of 40,000 pounds of TNT underwater nearby. But judging by the subsequently recorded earthquake measuring 3.9 on the Richter scale, it certainly shook up the sea creatures. All this time, the contractors continued to work hard on the functionality of the elevators, completing and handing them over to the Navy one after another. The carrier sensors and radars are also trying to keep up with other components in terms of innovation. 
Ford received the latest dual-band radar, DBR, which Raytheon developed specifically for the futuristic Zumwalt-class destroyers. Unfortunately, Zumwalt was ahead of its time and turned out to be too expensive, but their radars took root quite well on board the Ford class. DBR combines the SPY-3 multifunctional X-band radar with S-band volume search radar emitters distributed over three phased arrays, providing radar illumination and tracking of targets at low altitude and their further tracking in all weather conditions. However, on the second ship of the class, CVN-79 John F. Kennedy, the Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar, EASR, was installed to replace the DBR, saving the U.S. Navy more than $300 million. Generally speaking, the price of the next vessel turned out to be expectedly lower than the pioneer of the class, $11.34 billion versus $12.8 billion. The fangs of the aircraft carrier are two launches of surface-to-air missiles IM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow, ESSM, two platforms with small homing surface-to-air missiles IM-116 Rolling Airframe Missile, RAM, three phalanx close-in weapon systems, TWS, 425mm Mk-38 machine guns, and four more M2 Browning .50 caliber machine guns. But all this power may fall short before a new danger in the face of enemy hypersonic missiles. Take the same Chinese DF-21D hypersonic anti-ship missile flying along the trajectory of an intercontinental ballistic missile and then diving at speeds of up to Mach 10. Now at its range of more than 1,240 miles, and you get the dangerous prospect of creating an area denial bubble in the form of a 1,200-mile radius around each such launch platform located along the coast. Unfortunately, current systems are unable to intercept a missile at such an insane speed. But what about the speed of light? After all, this would simply laugh in the face of any hypersonic missile. Additionally, the cost of firing even from the most powerful combat lasers installed on a ship will cost taxpayers only $1 to $10, in contrast to any real or potential hypersonic interceptor missiles whose price can easily exceed tens of millions of dollars. You can literally get rid of the number one threat to your aircraft carriers for the price of a cup of tea, as goes the song of the same name. Here at the top of the table for the military today is FEL, or Free Electron Laser Technology, which is a candidate for directed energy anti-aircraft and anti-missile weapons. The principle of its operation is as follows. Radars detect an object approaching at supersonic speed. The guidance system locks onto the target while taking into account the heat and turbulence from hypersonic flight. From many beams, a single beam begins to impact the enemy target's weak points, its fairing, control surfaces, fuel tanks, or homing head, causing loss of control and or destruction of the target. Even if the target was not completely destroyed, its trajectory was somehow disrupted and it became vulnerable to finishing off by other air defense systems. More specifically, the most likely combat laser of the future to be installed on the Ford class could be Helios, better known as High Energy Laser with Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance. This is a high-energy laser weapon with a power of 300 kilowatts, the development of which is the responsibility of the well-known Lockheed Martin, which has already given us many cool experimental aircraft. Unlike blasters from Star Wars, laser beams do not explode when they hit a target, but they do generate intense heat that can literally melt the sensors on drones and missiles approaching the ship. The only thing that the fleet and scientists working on Helios need to do is to tweak the power of the beam. After all, to effectively protect the US Navy fleet anywhere on the planet, Helios will require power from 500 kilowatts to 1 megawatt, with an operating wavelength in the infrared range of 1 to 5 microns, which will be optimal for transmitting energy through the atmosphere, taking into account the weather. Moreover, the US super aircraft carriers already fulfill the two main conditions for the successful installation of such futuristic weapons. First, the laser integrates well with the ESA SPY-6 for precise tracking and tracking of hypersonic targets. And secondly, the USS Ford, having in stock nuclear reactors with a generation of over 600 megawatts, will definitely easily allocate about 100 to 105 megawatts for the needs of even the most powerful combat laser. More than 10 years ago, the USS Ponce had successfully tested a 40 kilowatts laser, sinking a motorboat, destroying a drone, and detonating a rocket-propelled grenade on an approaching vessel. And now, after all this time, in February of this year, the US Navy announced that the Arleigh Burke-class destroyer USS Preble also successfully tested Helios to destroy an unmanned aerial target. Moreover, it was first noticed on board Preble back in 2022 when the laser debut preceded the battle with the Houthis. It was then placed on the main forward pedestal of the ship where the Phalanx CIWS MK-15 had previously been located. For now, we can only guess when the time will come for testing on board something larger than destroyers, and we sincerely hope that after the use of a combat laser on board the USS Ford, there will be no one left who believes that the future is not yet arrived.